Hello, I'm Gil Zilka, and welcome to my channel. This is my series entitled Essential Classical Music, where we look at the best recordings of the major classical music works. This video is taken out of my larger video where I cover the major concerto recordings. And if you enjoy this, I hope you'll take the time to also watch that larger one. Uh, just know that you don't have to watch the entire thing uh, in one big long take. Uh, it is divided into chapters, so it's really easy to just click through and uh, view uh, whichever work uh, you're curious about. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's talk about his violin concerto. Again, one of those, those you know, the, 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 there's the Beethoven, Brahms, Mendelssohn, Sibelius, which we just talked about, and then you have to add Tchaikovsky to that pantheon of great violin concertos. A wonderful showpiece for, uh, for violin virtuosos. And we're fortunate to have a very good recording uh, in digital sound from Maxim Vengerov. This was recorded with Claudio Bado and the Berlin Philharmonic in 1995. Uh, Vengerov is not only uh, a supreme virtuoso, but he's also a thoughtful artist, so uh, he brings out the, the beautiful, softer aspects of the piece as well. Abado does an excellent job supporting him. It's very exciting, so that's a great uh, digital version. Um, we also need to talk about Oistrakh. Uh, Oistrakh was wonderful in this concerto. Uh, couple of versions to discuss. Again, it's the old debate uh, because he had so many versions of everything. Um, I tend to favor this one. This is the earlier one from 1954. Uh, it is mono. It's with Franz Konwichny and then the, uh, the Dresden Schatzkapelle, just like the Brahms concerto. Uh, I think this shows Oistrakh at his best. Uh, he, he shows his, uh, you know, he not only brings the virtuosity, but uh, there's a warmth to his playing, uh, just a beautiful, beautiful fluidity. Uh, we also then have the one from 1959 with, uh, this is in stereo, with Eugene Ormandy and the Philadelphia Orchestra. This is with the Sibelius Concerto. Uh, and this one, I would say it's just, it's just slightly less inspired, but it's still really good. You know, you're, you're comparing apples and oranges, I guess. Uh, it, the tone is a little uh, thicker, I would say, in this later recording. Uh, so maybe that's why for me it's not as, it doesn't have that dexterity perhaps of the earlier one, but it's, it's still very good. And Oistrakh is just a supreme artist as well as a virtuoso. So you're gonna wanna hear him in this concerto. Uh, another really great one, uh, violinist that we have not discussed yet, uh, Russian violinist, is Leonid Kogan. Uh, this recording is with Konstantin, Konstantin Silvestri and the Paris Conservatoire. It was recorded in 1959. Uh, a little bit rough sounding, but, but fairly good, fairly clear. And, and Kogan was a, a, just a real passionate performer, uh, a great virtuoso who uh, every time you hear him, no matter what, what he's playing, he's, he's, he's always bringing in this, you know, he's, you can tell there's this passionate commitment behind his playing. Uh, and his is, is a wonderful uh, Tchaikovsky concerto. Now, another version from 1959 that I want to recommend is Nathan Milstein. Uh, you have to hear Milstein's Tchaikovsky. Uh, he brought that wonderful uh, nobility, uh, lyricism, effortless virtuosity. Uh, this is with William Steinberg and the Pittsburgh Symphony. Uh, and actually, I mentioned it earlier when talking about the Brahms concertos. Uh, he has that wonderful version with uh, Fistulari uh, that is actually coupled with this on the, the budget Seraphim label. And, and that really is an unbeatable uh, violin concerto coupling. Uh, this happens to be a separate issue under the, the Capitol Records, the full dimensional sound series, uh, coupled with Steinberg's Brahms First Symphony. Uh, you can't go wrong with either one. Uh, the sound is uh, fantastic. Uh, just, you know, the, the full dimensional sound, it, it was, was really fantastic. And uh, this, this is definitely a, a version of the Tchaikovsky concerto that uh, you can't go wrong with. Uh, as is, we need to discuss, where did he go? Hi, Fitz. Uh, I talked about this earlier. I, I'm, I'm a little bit cool on this recording uh, of the Brahms Concerto with Fritz Reiner. Uh, I'm 
not quite as cool on the Tchaikovsky. Uh, this is from 1957, again with Fritz Reiner and the Chicago Symphony. Maybe it's because the Tchaikovsky lends itself more to sort of the virtuosic display. But even in this recording, I, I think it, the, the speeds are a little bit fast for the sake of fast, for, in, in my opinion. At the same time, uh, you know, if, if, if at the end of the day, this is a display piece for Heifetz's brilliance, it's still worth hearing for that reason because I mean he's amazing. He's, he's, it's, there's the virtuosity and there's the ease and the grace with which he played. Uh, the, I mean he, he just he was you know like the 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 Michael Jordan of violinist uh, if you want to think of it in those terms. Uh, he could do things that you know no one else could. Um, that said though, uh, just like in the Brahms. Uh, I think his earlier version actually shows him in, in better form in terms of communicating passion and, uh, and uh, performing in a way that is, it doesn't feel like he's just in a rush to get through it and, and prove how quickly he can play. And that is this version from 1937 with John Barbaroli and the London Philharmonic. Uh, they, they give the, the piece a little bit more time to breathe. Uh, and this really is one of the great Tchaikovsky concerto uh, recordings. Uh, supreme virtuosity, supreme artistry. Uh, you know, it, and Barbaroli is a, a wonderful uh, accompanist. However, if I am going to pick a version of the Tchaikovsky concerto to live with, uh, I actually, uh, my favorite is the one... Uh, from Bronislaw Huberman, and he gave us actually two versions. Now, here you get virtuosity with this uh, artistic imagination and, and warmth and heart. It's just all of it together. Uh, uh, Huberman's Tchaikovsky concerto just, just has to be heard. Uh, this is the earlier version. Uh, uh, this is coupled uh, on Naxos with the, the Beethoven concerto that he did with Zell. This is from 1928 with William Steinberg and the Berlin Staatskapelle. And it actually is a pretty good sounding recording from 1928, believe it or not. It's a studio recording and uh, it, you know, it's, it's limited and distant, but uh, you, you, know, you can hear it pretty well. And Huberman just is amazing in this recording. He's, he's just, uh, it's so spontaneous sounding and, and he, he's, he uses the virtu virtuosity in a way not to bring attention to himself, but to, but to serve the music. Uh, now, I, I, I also love this version. This is coupled with that Brahms concerto recording uh, from Carnegie Hall. This was also live in Carnegie Hall with Eugene Ormandy and the Philadelphia Orchestra. This is in 1946. Uh, he only died, I think, like the very next year. Um, but it's, it, it is very good. It's, it's, quite, it's, it's probably not quite as impressive from a technical standpoint as the earlier recording. Uh, the tone also was a little bit more raw, uh, but it, it, it still is, a, is one of the best Tchaikovsky concerto recordings I've ever heard. And the sound quality, strangely enough, the earlier one actually sounds more clear because it's a studio recording. This one's a little bit more rough, but there is more presence to it. Uh, so uh, there is that. So either way, Huberman's Tchaikovsky, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, just, just has to be heard. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, I hope you'll also take time to click the like and subscribe buttons. And with that, I want to wish you all a great day and happy listening.